Hello there, this is Randy. Today we're going to talk about what is the relationship between the polynomial remainder theorem and the graph of a given function. Let's go. So as a reminder, let's read real quick what is the polynomial remainder theorem. It is the following. When f of x is a polynomial that is divided by x minus a, that is a linear expression, x minus a, the remainder of that quotient, f of x divided by x minus a, will be f of a. So just as a quick introductory example, let's say that f of x is equal to x squared times x minus 4 all squared. And let's say that x minus a is x minus 4. So now we're going to do f of x divided by x minus 4. So that is the division that we would do, but because we're doing the remainder theorem, we don't actually need to do like long division because we're just trying to find the remainder. So what is the remainder? Well, it's gonna be f of a. We know that a corresponds to four, and f of four is when we plug in four for x in the original function. So let's plug in four for x right there and x right there. So real quick, what we'll do is we'll draw an arrow over here. This was the next part of our discussion after we started. And then we'll draw an arrow over here where we talk about f of a. So hopefully you realized that x minus 4 is actually a factor of this function. So 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 squared is 0. And 0 times 16 is 0. So f of 4 is 0. And as we talked about, f of 4 is f of a and f of a is the remainder. So that means that the remainder of this quotient is zero. Okay, so why is this significant? Let's look at a situation that also includes a graph. So here we have the remainder theorem again, and now we're gonna to try to answer this question based on what we just talked about. So it says, according to the remainder theorem, f of x divided by which of the following linear expressions will give us a remainder of zero? Now remember that the remainder corresponds to f of a. And you will see some questions that involve a graph and some questions that don't. The graph is not absolutely necessary, but it helps us conceptualize what's happening and what a remainder of zero really indicates. So what they're asking is which of these four options in the denominator up here in this division will make for a remainder of zero. Now remember, in this video, we're not doing long division. We're trying to figure out how to answer this question using logic. Okay, now here is the key. In this division problem, in order for there to be no remainder, the denominator needs to be a factor of the numerator. I'll say that again. In order for there to be no remainder in this division problem, the denominator needs to be a factor of the numerator. So which of these four options is a factor of the numerator? Obviously, only b can be the answer. x minus 2 is a factor of this expression up above. So of all these options, because x minus 2 is the only factor of the numerator, we know that x minus 2 is the answer. That is, that expression, x minus 2, will give us a remainder of 0. Okay, so what does this tell us about the graph of the function? If we take x minus 2, or any factor, of our original function, and we set it equal to 0, then that will give us a root, a 0, an x-intercept. And although this was not part of the question, you can see that x equals 2 is, in fact, an x-intercept with a multiplicity of 2, because you can see that that expression, the x minus 2, is squared. So a quick review, whenever you see a question like this, whether or not you have a graph, all you need to do is ask the question, which of our answer options is a factor of our original function? Whichever one is a factor tells us which linear expression will give us a remainder of zero, according to the remainder theorem. Who would have guessed that the remainder theorem is so interconnected with the zeros of the graph of a function? And that is everything. See you next time.